controversy about that. Um, the reason that, that we chose this scripture for this week is, you know, we've been talking a lot about how do we do this? How do we do this work here in Salt Lake City? Um, and one of the things that I know that I am horrible at is waiting. You know? Now there are some things I can wait on. I can find all kinds of ways to procrastinate the next paper I have to write. Right? <laughs> but when it comes to waiting for certain things, I'm just not good at it. I want to go to Ikea right now because I want those towels. You know? I want whatever I want right now. I think a lot of us are like that in our culture, right? Because we're taught to be, we're advertised to, to be that way, right? So when we talk about MCC and we talk about building this, this presence here, sometimes it's hard for me because I've always pastored churches that already existed. I've never actually started one. And so I walk in and I go, but wait, I should walk in and find all these people and all the seats should already be set up and everything's already laid out, right? And it doesn't always work that way because this is a new thing that we're doing. And I suspect for some of our people it's frustrating too because it's like, but we know about it, so everybody else should, right? And we're excited to be here, so everybody else should. But sometimes you have to wait on God's plan, right? And that's hard. So here's the thing that we have to do. We have to figure out what to do in the waiting. Because there is a difference between hanging out and doing nothing, right, and waiting on God. Because God's waiting is busy. There's always stuff to do in God's waiting, right? So while we're waiting for whatever it is we're supposed to be doing, there are still things we're supposed to be doing. Does that make sense? You ever sat in your driveway in your car and somebody said, turn the wheel to the right. It doesn't matter if you have power steering, right? If you're sitting still and you go to turn that wheel, it's hard. But how hard is it when you're driving? It's pretty easy. You just turn the wheel and you think about it, right? And your car goes where you tell it to go. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that with God's stuff. If you're doing nothing, it's really hard when God tells you to turn. But if you're doing something, if you're at least trying to get out there and figure out what you're doing, you're in motion, right? Then God could say, hey, you left, <laughs> and you're ready, right? So it's sort of about being ready to do whatever we need to do. So one of the things that I want to talk about today, and this actually works out really, really well, ironically, because Scott's here, and Scott was here when we first met to talk about do we want an MCC? And he happened to be at the Pride Center when Curly walked in. And Reverend Edel Nancy Wilson, who is the moderator of our, our denomination, um, was in town. And we were going to talk about starting an MCC. And we had scheduled a meeting here. And Curly walked in. And there was Scott at the front desk volunteering. And she said, where's the MCC meeting? And what did you do, Scott? I lit up like a lot. I was so excited. MCC where? <laughs> and so there he was. Right? And so Scott joined us for that very first meeting where we had thin mints and water for communion because you know you do what you get you got with what you got. Right? So we have Scott here who's been there from that very first meeting literally mm -hmm. to friends that are new that we just met at the open house last week. Claudia and Miriam. <laughs> See, she doesn't intimidate me, so I can remember her name. <laughs> scare me. Claudia scared me. <laughs> no, these are great people. And, and we have Terry Miller, Reverend Terry Miller, who's with us from MCC in the Valley, right? Stockton. Stockton, yeah, California. Cool thing is, Terry's actually started an MCC, so she kind of knows how that works. And, and she's been with MCC for a while, so she kind of knows how some different things work as well, right? So one of the things let's talk about today, and I'm not one of those preachers that says, let's talk about it, meaning that I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> right? When I say let's talk about it, I mean really let's talk about it. Okay. So what is it from your perspective that you need either in a church or in a worship community or in a community of faith? Whatever you want to call it. What is it that you need in your life for your spiritual life that we might be able to be in this place? And that's the part where you all get to check. 
I think it's the um, camaraderie, the um, other people and their input and in learning. As an example, in my group Friday, there was a gender queer person. Okay. Now I have no clue, right? Because it's they, them, us, right. not him, her, whatever, you know. Yeah. So this is a place to come and put it together. Cool. Okay. I think I need other people to be around that or have things in common. The church. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. No, I'm just gonna be here. <laughs> no. No, I think for me, I I I need that weekly regrounding. You know, just like I mean, the the week can get all frenetic with work and school and homework and grading and you know all of those things and taking care of home stuff. That it's like you forget that why we're here mm. is about God. Mm. Um. You know, that's not always foremost on our minds. I think that's why we pray at dinner time. You know, that sort of thing. Because it's like, oh, that's another reminder. That's what we're here for. That's what we're focusing on. So church is able to provide that grounding for me. spiritual stuff, whatever that is, right? What is it about that that you guys need? Sharing one. Okay. Okay. Keeps us busy. What do you think? What do you guys need in California? Well, when you do this, what do we do? I think having authentic um, fellowship is, is very important. And what's authentic for me might not, not be authentic for you or others, but having that sacred space that holds it and having it be okay that we're different yeah. is, is very important. Um, and, and it's not about right or wrong, but it's about being able to understand where we've come from and maybe where we can stretch to go to. Yeah. So I think that that's very important. That's cool. So we have to challenge ourselves to be the pastor where we're at. Kind of. Yes. Yeah. Especially if someone brings a different perspective or different origin of faith. Right. Um, right. That, that is not similar to mine. Uh, I'm able to learn from their experience. Yeah. And hopefully they're able to learn from mine and, and have it be okay. So strength in the, in the diversity that, that brings us to the table. Okay. Awesome. So, if we think about the scripture that we read, right? We're talking about waiting on God. And we also know that there are things that we do while we're waiting, right? I mean, farmers don't just sit there and stare at the dark, right? <laughs> they plant those seeds. And then they prune, and then they do things in the garden, right, to keep things functioning the way they're supposed to. So if we're thinking about waiting to be whatever we're going to be, and yet doing those things in the meantime that get us there, can we be community in that meantime? Mm -hmm. I think we can, right? Can we, can we provide that place to be each Sunday that grounds us while we're waiting in the meantime? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we talk about the different kinds of places we come from spiritually to strengthen our faith, right, in the meantime. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Because I think those are all things that we do in the meantime. And I think the thing is, it's kind of like, you know, we garden every year. And we go and we plant the seeds and we do all the stuff and she's way better at it than I am. <laughs> Especially remembering to water. I remember to water, the problem is I forget to turn it back off and that's like, water for three days, right? <laughs> so I'm sort of a 
sketchy gardener. <laughs> But what I know is that if I just stand there and stare at it, I'm going to get really bored because it just takes time for those things to happen. But if I'm doing things like actually paying attention to the watering schedule or actually weeding, right, or doing those things that maintain a garden, then the garden comes out better and I'm not so bored in the meantime, right, because I'm, I'm doing those things that, that make that happen. And I want to suggest that MCC right now, where we're at in this place, is sort of at that stage, right? We're growing this sort of garden. We don't know exactly what we're going to grow yet, but knowing us, it'll be something queer and cool. Have we rainbow colored crops? I don't know, right? <laughs> <laughs> but that we have things that we do in the meantime, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll show up on a Sunday and there'll be four people here, or we'll show up and there'll be 12 people here, or 13, or whatever, you know, that number is for that week. But there are things that we're doing in the meantime. So we're building that community with each other, right? And we're grounding ourselves so that we can get through that week. Because sometimes it's like, I got to do this or I'm not going to make it, right? And we're sharing our faith in order to strengthen it. And talking about what that means because it's different for each of us. And I think when we talk about that, what do you believe? And what do I believe? That, in fact, does strengthen our faith because then we know as we clarify, I don't know about you guys, when I when I need to figure something out, I talk it out, and it's as I'm talking about it that the idea comes to me, or the answer comes, right? And that's sort of what we're doing. As we talk about what do you believe, and where do you come from, we're coming up with what we believe. 